Hey guys, we're at Glendale Planned Parenthood. Um, preaching the gospel, speaking for the voices. We ask that you pray for us, please. Good morning, Planned Parenthood. Or should I say Planned Murderhood? You don't plan parenthood by murdering babies. And doctors don't kill babies. Real doctors don't. They make a Hippocratic oath to protect life. So if you're breaking that oath, you're not a doctor. Just because someone gave you a piece of paper doesn't make you a doctor. And just because you made or said that people can or can't do something doesn't make it right by God's law, by God's standard. No man has a right to pass his law over on me and tell me I have to live by it. God's law is supreme. Jesus Christ is the king of the earth. Jesus Christ is the king of heaven and earth. He has been given all authority. So this morning we're here because we know that you're enslaved to this idea that you have the freedom to make a choice to murder a child. I'm here this morning because I know that you think that somehow you have the right to murder the most innocent among us. But the Word of God says differently. The Word of God says that He hates the hands that shed innocent blood. And if you're here in this place, in this parking lot, you need to know that you're in danger. You should be very afraid because the Word of God makes it very plain that God, He sent His Son to die in our place. We could have the righteousness of God through Him. But if we continue in sin, there remains no sacrifice. There's nothing we can do. We must have repentance. We must turn to Christ. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 1, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. That is all ungodliness and unrighteousness. So we have to ask, what is ungodliness? What is unrighteousness? Well, I would say, first of all, ungodliness can be as, as little as telling a lie. Unrighteousness is as little as telling a lie. And if you're here in this place, then you have believed the lie that it's okay to support a place that murders the most innocent among us. If you're here in this place, even if you're the person standing there with a the gun on your hip like you're somebody big, you're here as a murderer in God's eyes. You're protecting murderers. Therefore, you are guilty of the murder that they do here. The unrighteousness and the ungodliness that, this, that the Word is talking about here is the unrighteousness that we commit as human beings. But the Bible says that there is hope and forgiveness in Christ Jesus. God hates the hands that shed innocent blood, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. No matter what you say, you know in your heart that it is sin to, to murder an innocent being. You know that it is wrong to steal. You know that it's wrong to lie. You know that it's wrong to commit, commit adultery. But yet you come to a place, you give your resources to a place that murders babies. You get a paycheck from a place that murders babies. That is the unrighteousness, the ungodliness. Every one of us has the to, to put anything before the God of heaven, who is the creator of heaven and earth, who has created all things and given all things for our good. We all know that that is wrong. We all know that he deserves our praise and our adoration. He deserves to be glorified. Ma'am, would you please come and let us help you? We're here to help you today. We're here to give you hope in Jesus Christ and resources in town where they don't murder babies. Every one of us here today knows that we are not to make an idol to bow down to, even in our minds, making up a God who says it's okay to murder. Every one of us knows that God exists. We all know that He deserves our praise and adoration, that He deserves to be glorified, and He deserves 
to be praised, that he deserves us to be thankful to him for all that he has given us. Whether you know it or not, even your breath, even the breath that you breathe, God could take it in a heartbeat. He is not required to give you your breath. He could end it in a heartbeat. People die all the time. And the Bible literally says it is God that kills them. It is God that takes their life because it is Him who gives their life. Their life belongs to Him. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39, it says, Now see that I, that I, even I, am He, and there is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive. You see, when God kills, He's not murdering. It's different than here. He, he gives the life so He can take it. It's His to take or give. He says, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. God sometimes wounds us or allows us to be wounded, to test us, to grow us. To, he gives, allows us to be sick so that we can our, our immune system will grow. It is God who wounds. It is God, if, we get, if you get sick with any kind of disease or anything like that, it is God who gave it to you. And it is also Him that if He wants to, He can heal you from it. It says, nor is there anyone who can deliver from my hand. No one can deliver from God's hand. You cannot possibly add a moment, a second to your life. You will die at the moment that God decided before the foundation of the world. And nothing you do will change that. You had no say in when and where and how you were born. In the same way you will have no say as to when and where and how you will die. So the ungodliness that he's talking about here is, is us thinking that somehow we have power over God. Somehow us thinking that we are greater than God. We create a God that is a puny little God. Because we think somehow we have autonomy from that. We all know that we are not to take God's name in vain. But yet many of you would claim to be Christians. Many of you claim that you know the God of heaven. The problem is you're making up a God in your mind. It's not the God of heaven. It's not the creator of heaven and earth. You've made up a God who loves your sin. The unrighteousness and the ungodliness that he's talking about here in this verse is God has commanded all of us to set a day aside to worship him, to praise him, and to seek him. And all of us, many of us, have failed most of our lives. Many of us never take time to worship God or to praise Him or to glorify Him or to thank Him for what He has already given us. The ungodliness, the unrighteousness that He's talking about in this verse, is God tells us in His holy law, the law that He wrote on my heart and on your heart, that we are to honor our parents. If you're standing in this parking lot or you're inside that building, then you are dishonoring your parents. No, you're not honorable at all. You're dishonoring your parents because your parents gave life. Your parents never protected murderers. Your parents gave life to you. The ungodliness and the unrighteousness that he's talking about here is we all know it's been written on our heart that it's wrong to commit adultery, that men were, were created to protect women. And we all know that we're supposed to do that, but instead we don't. Not to protect them from, from, so that they can murder, but to pe protect them from the murderer. We all know that it's wrong to commit adultery. We know it's wrong to murder. Every one of us knows that. That no one even has to tell us. The Bible tells us it is written on our hearts in Romans chapter 2. Verses 14 and 15, it makes it plain that God's holy law is written on your heart. It's written on my heart. We know without without going to the Word of God, if we would go into the jungle where they never heard of God, they know that God exists. God has made it evident to them. He has revealed it to them. They know that it is wrong to go steal their neighbor's property. They know it's wrong to go have sex with their neighbor's wife or to murder an innocent person. They know it, it's in their heart. They know it's wrong to go. And this is the thing, God goes even further. God tells us not only should we not steal what belongs to someone else, 
He says we shouldn't even want what belongs to someone else. When God goes further, he, he judges our very thoughts, our intentions, our heart. And we all, this, this is the ungodliness that the Bible talks about, the ungodliness and unrighteousness. We need a Savior. Because we have all done that, we've all lived in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. Every one of us knows that God exists. God has revealed to you, every one of you, that He exists. It says, for since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes, God's invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You're without excuse. You who murder babies, you who help murder babies, and you who protect murderers, you are without excuse. You who bring your children to the God, to, the, to sacrifice them to the God of convenience, to the God of I want to have what I want to have. I don't care about anyone but me. You know it is sin. You're without excuse. The Bible tells us because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God. Nor were they thankful. You see, you're not glorifying God for what He has already given you. Given you. You're not thanking Him. You're not recognizing Him for the fact that He is. You know He created the world around you. You know that He created the baby in the womb. You know it's a life, a human being, an image bearer of God. You know, but instead of doing something to protect that baby, you protect those that would, would murder it. You protect yourself. You're trying to cause this to be something that is, is okay, but God says it's not. God says it's not okay. It says, although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God. In other words, they didn't, they didn't believe Him. They didn't obey Him. And it says, nor were they thankful. They didn't thank God for what God has given them. You see, God put that baby in your womb. God put the baby in your womb, and you know it's, your, it's there. You know God put it there. You know it's a gift from God. But you're not thankful. Instead, you sacrifice it to the God of convenience so that you can have your fancy cars and your big houses and your big screen TVs. I mean, obviously, think about it. This place makes enough money. Murdering the most innocent among us to hire a full-time armed guard and to have armed cars come in there and pick up their money that they've made for murdering the most innocent among us. Planned Parenthood is like an auction house where they say, I've got an arm, who will give me 20 now, buy it. They sell, they sell the parts of the babies that are to the highest bidder. Literally, with the backup of their evil, wicked, depraved government. And their evil, wicked, depraved security. They are, the people coming in here, they're not thankful for what God has given them. They're not thankful. And because they're not thankful, it says because it says their hearts became futile. Or their thoughts became futile. And because their thoughts become futile, their foolish hearts are darkened. When you do this, your heart will be darkened. You still need to know that. Your heart will be darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. People come into this place. And they profess to be wise, thinking that, oh, I'm going to get rid of this, and then I can have all that I want. But they become fools, literally. The Bible makes it very plain. And you should know this, that you will deal with depression. You will struggle with suicidal thoughts. In Romans chapter 3, we see a picture of what men are. We see a picture of what men are. It says there is none righteous. There is none righteous. None of us can claim to be righteous without Christ. Christ is the only righteousness that I have. I have no righteousness outside of Jesus Christ. It says there is none righteous, no, not even one. None of us outside of Christ Jesus are righteous. We cannot claim. We need a Savior. Jesus 
was righteous, the God-man, Jesus Christ, God from eternity past. You see, it tells us in, first, or in the Gospel of John, it says, it tells us that the Word became flesh. And we have to ask, what was that Word? Who was the Word that became flesh? In the Gospel of John, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and then the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. And without Him, nothing was made that was made. It says, in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And then over in verse 14, it tells us, it says that the Word became flesh. He dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ is the Word of God. He came to earth. Literally, in Philippians, it tells us that Jesus Christ took on, He humbled Himself to come to this earth. It says, being in the form of God did not... He did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself a full reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, coming in the likeness of man. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus Christ came many, many years ago. He came. It says in Hebrews, it says, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the power, of, by the word of his power. Jesus Christ, it says, when he, had, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, had become as much better than the angels. Jesus Christ, God from eternity past, always was God. He was in the beginning with God, that's what it says. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. When the, when, when the Bible says, God said, let there be light, that was Jesus Christ. He was who said, let the earth bring forth vegetation. He created you. He created your lungs and your eyes. He gave you your legs and your arms. He gave you your ability to think. Jesus Christ, all things continue by the power of His Word. He is the God-man. He came to earth, God the Father sent His Son, His eternal Son from eternity past, sent Him to earth. And He came here. He was always God from eternity past. He will always be Nobody God. But he came it, it through the womb of the Virgin Mary. He came through the womb and He became a man at the moment of conception that He was conceived by the Holy Spirit inside of the Mother Mary. He became a human being, an image bearer of God at that instant. At that moment, at that instant, he was an image bearer of God. And at the moment of conception, the Holy Spirit was conceived, conceived Jesus in the womb of Mary. And so this is the thing. Jesus Christ is the only one that was righteous. He's the only one that can stand in your place. He's the only one that can forgive you of your sins. Jesus Christ from eternity past, was with God. It literally tells us, he says, he was God. And so he, he came to earth, he was born of a woman, he lived a holy, righteous, and just life, never sinning in thought, word, and deed. And I, I just, I want you to think about that. That God in heaven, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, he could have ended the human race immediately. But in his grace, Although Adam and Eve died spiritually and when the world fell into sin, God in His grace killed an animal. An animal died in their place. Although they died spiritually, He allowed them to go on living physically. And from that point on, the world has fallen into darkness more and more until Christ came. But then 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ Truly God, truly man, came into the world, came to the womb of a woman, and took on flesh, and came into the world. And then he lived a righteous and holy and perfect, just life. Man, would you come and let us help you today? 
We're here to offer hope and forgiveness in Christ. We can adopt your baby. We can give you free resources. Ma'am, we can help you. The Bible says God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. Amen. But there's hope and forgiveness in Christ, man. We're here because we care about you. I don't care why you're here. You're here supporting those that murder the most innocent among us. God calls you a murderer for that. Turn from this place of evil. So Jesus Christ, he was righteous. He's the only righteous one. You see, we are not righteous. There's none of us that claim to be righteous. Even Christians do not have a righteousness of their own. Because the Bible says that God made him, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, that we might be the righteousness of God through him. It says there's none who understand. You see, we in our lost conditions, we don't even know our lostness. We don't recognize our need of a Savior. We don't understand what sin is until God, the light of Christ, comes and lives in us and shows us what sin is. We need Jesus Christ. Every one of us needs Jesus Christ to come and live in our hearts and reveal to us what sin is and cause us to hate it. Because God deserves our praise. It says there's none who understands. And even a Christian, a, 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 a regenerated Christian, we truly don't understand what Christ did for us in the cross. We could never truly come to understand how God the Father could kill His only begotten Son, His eternal Son. So there's none who understands. The Bible says there's none who seeks for God. None of us. Oh, we got another paid hitman here. Ma'am, would you please come? Would you please come and let us help you, ma'am? You will answer to God for being here, ma'am. It says there's none who seek for God. You see. We seek for the God that, that loves our sin. We seek for the, we make up a God in our mind who, who doesn't mind murder, who doesn't mind sexual immorality, who doesn't mind lying and stealing. Who, a God who is okay if we don't if we don't glorify Him. A God that's okay if we don't thank Him and praise Him. A God that that doesn't care if we are wicked and live in depravity. We make up a God in our mind, and even those, and you have to understand, even those that, of us that are, have been regenerated, we don't truly seek for God, it's God that seeks for us. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and, Adam and Eve sinned, they ran and they hid from God, and that's the same thing that happens here today. It happens in the world around us. Our sin separates us from God. It's always God that comes to us. And that's what's happening now. God has sent me and my brothers here to tell you the hope that there is in Christ Jesus. Well, how are you? Yes, sir. Yeah, last week she got, I had three little children here, and she threatened me. I don't know what to do. Yeah. She's not with us. She's got a finger up here. She's got a little ring. No, I'm not. I can't even reach him. You got it this close to my dad earlier. Yes, you did. Can I just touch the glass? Yeah, it's not my body, it's part of my ears. Okay. Well, if she holds it to my face and my ears, I'm going to have it on the camera. Like I said, okay, so what about when she damages my son's ear? What about that? Is that, is that okay then? Sorry, yeah. Yeah. So 
pay for her to do that if it is for you to put there with your own speaker. I don't put it in her ear in her case. There's a big difference. I'm saying that I could put it up for them, but I really want to hear what you say. I just don't see how, why you would, I, do, I don't see why people can't be reasonable and not put the dogs. Okay, how am I not being reasonable and not having enough the dogs? I'm not putting these specific rights on people. So you want to make it personal, you can. Okay. I felt like that was what you were trying to make sure I understood. And if it's too loud, I'll shut it down and drop it. I didn't, I didn't mean to be too loud. I just know that she gets, has, I see my kids are all over, right here. She came up and got right in their face and growled at them and scared them so bad that my wife won't even bring them out here anymore. That's assault. I know it's assault. And I called witnesses to it. I enforced the law for 20 years. I was going to have them. No, I didn't. But I'm just saying, she assaulted my children. I have the right to protect my children. I chose not to. But I chose not. I said we could move them over to the other side of the street and got them away from here. Now today she has put the speaker up in his, in his face. Put it up in her face. She shoved me places. Not okay. She's getting in my personal space and their personal space. Hey, Neil. I don't know. Maybe it's not an assault. Well, the person feels threatened. The reasonable person is threatened. Well, I'll tell you. We don't want to. We're not trying to get involved. We're not trying to get involved. Does that make sense? I know you guys have a hard time. First Amendment. I agree with First Amendment. I want you to know that. I'll try to make it a little bit quieter. I appreciate it. Um, so they were here with the speaker, obviously. So I just came right here to the edge and then they came out with the sign and I asked him respectfully. Actually, at first I asked him to back up and then I corrected myself and asked him if he could please back up. And then he yelled at me and told me it's not a law. And I said, okay, I'm going to have to go back up to six feet. It's not a law. That had to be there. Why did you have to back up when you approached him? I didn't approach him. He came over here. Right up to my dog. And you shoved her out of the way. I just, I didn't shove him out of the way. I just went over there within six feet. Because obviously I think COVID is real. Obviously I think COVID is real. I'm wearing a mask. I always stay within six feet of distance. I believe you know that. And I went up within six feet just with my speaker sitting here with my speaker. It was on my shoulder. And I just stand there. And then I saw him with the microphone. What's your purpose in doing that? Because they were yelling at me. And I didn't want anybody to hear me. So why do you think they have a right to come to my house? Do you think that they don't have a right to come to my house? They do, but I also have a right to come to your house. No, you have a right to speak to me. You don't have a right to come around from my house. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. It is how I do. No, I'm not. I'm sorry, but 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 I'm not. Do you have anything else in your car? Like, no? No. Stay out. Are you done there? I'm going to let him go for a little bit. All right, cut it off.